Hi there, and welcome to this lesson on Pure Mathematics 3. We're on chapter 1, uh, 1.2. And what we're looking at is an alternative method for doing questions which involved algebraic division, partial fraction type questions. Uh, it's a very useful method, and it can be a very powerful method in certain situations and provide a far quicker way of answering questions. Um, it's called substitution and comparing coefficients because it really involves two completely separate ideas. One being a, a way of using nice substitutions and the other, how you compare coefficients with two sides of an identity, really. Okay, the questions are exactly like the ones we were looking at in the last lesson, but the way forward is very different. To begin with, you do make it look like it was in the last lesson, and you multiply everything by x minus three. When you multiply, all those things by x minus 3. What you get is x cubed plus x squared minus 7 is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c times by x minus 3 plus d. And that is what would become the quotient in the method we were doing before, and d is the remainder. But at this point, things take a very different turn. We try letting x equals 3 just to see what answer we get. And the reason for choosing x equals 3, it's not random, it's all because of this bracket here. We're deliberately choosing a number that will make this bracket equal to 0, because that turns out to be very helpful. So putting 3 in here, we get 3 cubed plus 3 squared minus 7, which is that. Putting 3 in here, we get 9a plus 3b plus c. And then this is the reason for choosing 3. If you put 3 in there, you get 3 minus 3, which is 0. What that means is this bracket simplifies to 29. All of this vanishes because you're timesing by zero. And all you're left with on the right-hand side is D, which is the remainder. And we can say straight away, the remainder is going to be 29. We then let x equals zero. The reason for choosing zero is because if we choose x to equal zero, lots of the terms will equal zero. Cubed will, x squared will, x squared there will, x will there, and x will there. It's just a helpful number to choose to make things simpler. So we get 0 plus 0 take away 7 on the left, 0 plus 0 plus c, times by 0 minus 3 plus d. That simplifies to that. Rearranging that, you get 3c is 36. Solving that, you get c equals 12. So we've now worked out d. We've worked out c. At this point, we use a different technique for working out what a and b must be. Now we do what's called comparing coefficients. This is frequently an important idea in A-level maths. Uh, we have an identity. These two things are exactly the same as each other. And the coefficients of all the powers of x must be the same on both sides. So on the left-hand side, we've got 1x cubed. On the right-hand side, we've got ax squared times x, which is ax cubed. That's it. That's the only x cubed term. The coefficient on the left is 1. The coefficient on the right, when we multiply that out, will be a. That tells you straight away, a is going to equal 1. All that's left now is b. To find b, we compare the coefficient of the x squared. On the left-hand side, we've got 1x squared, so we've got 1 here. On the right-hand side, the x squared comes from two places. We've got minus 3 times by ax squared, minus 3ax squared, so that's part of the coefficient. We've also got bx times x, so bx squared. So b is the other part of the coefficient. We need to be a little bit careful on that. We already know a equals 1, so we can substitute that in there. That gives us 1 equals minus 3 plus b, and that gives us b equals 4. And that is the question solved. So we found the values of a, b, c, and d. a is 1, b is 4, c is 12, d is 29. Have a go yourself at using that method on this example. Pause the video, start it again when you are ready. Okay, we'll go through it, same method as before. First thing we do is deal with the x plus two on the bottom of the fractions. That means we just multiply everything by x plus two. That gives us this. Once we've done that, we choose two possible substitutions. Now, the first one is x equals minus two because of this bracket here. Substituting minus two into the left-hand side gives us this. Substituting minus two into the right-hand side gives us this, and zero in that bracket. 
which is the reason why we do it. The left-hand side simplifies to minus 2. The right-hand side is just D. Again, we know the remainder straight away. The remainder D will equal minus 2. Then we let x equal 0 because it makes lots of the terms vanish. On the left-hand side, we just have 4. On the right-hand side, this bracket, we just have C. X plus 2 just becomes 2. Simplifying that gives us 4 equals 2C minus 2 because we know that D equals minus 2. 2C is 6, so C equals 3. That's how we find C and D. To find A and B, we compare the coefficients of the X cubed term and the X squared term. X cubed first. On the left-hand side, we've got 1X cubed. On the right-hand side, when we multiply the brackets, we'll have AX cubed. So A must equal 1, same as before. The coefficient of the x squared, well, this time we've got 2 on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, the x squared coefficient comes from two places. We'll have 2 times ax squared, which gives us the 2a down here, and b times x squared, which gives us the b here. We substitute the a equals 1 in because we know that, and then we can work out that b must equal 0, which means there will be no term in x in the answer. Um, one more question for you to have a go at. So pause the video again, and this is the last question we'll be doing on this video. Have a go at this one. Uh, it started for you. You can complete it. Okay. So the starting point after we've multiplied through by x plus 3 is to choose the value that will make this bracket equal to 0. In this case, that's minus 3. Substitute that value into the left-hand side. Substitute that value into the right-hand side. The left-hand side becomes 31. The right-hand side, all of that vanishes. We've just got D. And again, we find the remainder very quickly. D must equal 31. Let X equal 0, because on the left-hand side, it very quickly simplifies to 1. The right-hand side simplifies to this, which is just 3C plus 31, because we know D equals 31. That means 3c is minus 30 and c is minus 10. The x squared term is a little bit more confusing. The coefficient on the uh, left-hand side for the x squared... Oh, sorry. I need to do the x cubed term first. So looking at the coefficient of the x cubed, first of all. Uh, on the left-hand side, we just have 1x cubed. On the right-hand side, we have ax cubed when we multiply the brackets. Same as the other two questions. a will equal 1. And then we move on to the x squared term. Uh, and the x squared term is a little bit more fiddly. On the left-hand side, we've got 5x squared, so the coefficient is 5. On the right-hand side, we've got 3 times ax squared, so 3a is part of the coefficient. We've also got bx squared when we multiply those together, so that's the other part. Then we substitute a equals 1, that gives us 5 equals 3 plus b. That gives us b equals 2, and that is the question done. So A will equal 1, B will equal 2, C here will be minus 10, and the remainder D on the top there will be 31. Okay, that gets us to the end of this lesson, and the same exercise that we were at before. Uh, I would try and do some of these questions, but using this method, just to reinforce your understanding of it. Okay, thank you very much for attending, and cheerio.